the Spanish service. We pray for the English service, Father, that the lives that don't know about you keep coming through these doors, Father, and being transformed just the way you transform us, Father. We give you grace. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Right where you're at, start talking to him. Start talking to him. I know there's something you're thankful for. I know there's something in your life that he has changed. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything you've done, Father. In this moment, we will, in this moment, we will give you praise. In this moment, we will worship your name. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall proclaim that you are king, Father. But right now, we want to proclaim your name. We want to proclaim your name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why don't we give him a round of applause? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. How beautiful it is to give thanks to God. Amen. Well, right now we're going to enter into our worship music. Uh, we motivate you guys. God gives us, God's Holy Spirit gives us the freedom to express ourselves, right? To express ourselves and give Him praise. Give Him a dance, you know? I know that when you're in the stadium, I'm a big sports fan. I know when, uh, right now March Madness, I know when the, the game buzzer hits, I get like, oh man, let's go. Now I'm here in the house of God. I can do the same, but I can do it ten times better for my Lord and Savior. Because the teams that sports doesn't offer me anything. But when I dance for my Lord, and when I shout for my Lord, I know that my, my spirit is being rejoiced in His presence. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's give God
Happy 
so beautiful to be here in the house of the Lord. God's spirit is here. Amen. So if your friends couldn't make it today, be, hey, don't worry. I got you. Go to Rav underscore church in our YouTube channel. You'll be able to catch the English service now. So we're grateful. We're thankful for our, our pastor Mario. God is giving him the wisdom and it's beautiful. Amen. It's very beautiful. Before we begin this beautiful service, well, it's already begun, but I have a couple of announcements. The first one is uh, we are starting this course called How to Start the Race. And no, it's not a physical race, guys. Okay? It's not a physical race where we have you run marathon, laps. No, it's a spiritual race. It's how to start the race. If you have any questions about the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, uh, why we believe God is one. We have our teachers today, Brother Ivan and uh, beautiful wife, Sister Elizabeth. Raise your hand. Amen. Glory to God. 
Today we will be helping us with how to start the race. There are our teachers. If you have any questions, if you want to sign up, it's absolutely free. Get with Brother Ivan Ivan and Sister Elizabeth, and it is going to be at 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock, okay? So if you're thinking, man, I wish I could go, but uh, just I just come in the morning, we have it available at 8 o'clock, okay? And our other message, our other announcement is not too late. We are in our Daniel fast, amen? Yeah. Some of you guys looking a little bit more healthier. Yeah. Some of you guys looking a little bit more green. Yeah. Uh, as for myself, the Daniel fast has been a blessing in my life, not only the physical side, but also the spiritual side. Amen. The Daniel fast, uh, real quick, I didn't know how much we love food. Taquitos, molitas, you know, tacos de tripas and all that stuff. We love food, but with the Daniel fast, it, had, it has really helped me in the spiritual side because when I want to eat, when I'm driving by in and out and I smell that, oh man, or I see the little, like, you know, the little, uh, what is the gummy creepy crawlers, the gummy bears, the gummy worms. Oh, my sweet tooth just goes. But at that time, when I think of food, right away I think about God. And I start realizing, hey, this Daniel fast is really helping me because I think more about God now than before the Daniel fast. So the Daniel fast helps you not only uh, for your physical health as well, but also your spiritual life because it helps you focus more on God. And I think about food every time. So you can imagine that when we leave here, I see the elotero, I see the takis and stuff. So when I think of that, I'm going to think of, oh God, you know, hey, I'm good, God. You know, thank you for this beautiful service today. A lot of beautiful people showed up. How many of you here for the first time? Or second time? Okay, okay, man. Well, Rivers of Living Water, we, we are happy that you're here with us in the English service. And without any further ado, I would like to present today our... Oh. Before we begin, sorry, I forgot one thing. Can we please stand up? We're actually, uh, we're going to pray for our offering. I forgot because I do my offering through Givelify. Yeah. If you guys, how many of you guys have Givelify? Hey, Amen. I know some of you guys, uh, if you guys like to give with a happy heart, right? We have our app called Givelify. You download it, Givelify, and you choose the amount you want to contribute to the church. Amen. And it's all digital. You don't have to carry your money stuff so that's one way and another way our ushers right now are going to help us with the offering remember whatever it is god has put in your heart uh we give with the joyous heart knowing that god's going to bless our lives amen so right where you're at if you guys can help me pray for our offering heavenly father thank you for this beautiful day you've given us thank you for the offering we're about to collect father we give with the joyous heart knowing that you always provide for us father knowing that you always put vegetables in our table father knowing that you always provide a roof over our head and most importantly you provide us with the family the warm father today we give you blessings father we ask that you multiply these offerings father and also we take time to pray for those families that are in need i know you're always providing for them father and we ask that you open the windows of blessing father we give you glory and we give you praise in jesus name we pray amen amen you guys may be seated now, I'd like to present the feature for today. Brother Izzy? What, what do we tell Brother Izzy? Israel? All right, can we give the Lord a hand clap for his goodness? For his mercy. Amen. Once again, we're announcing if you want to start the class beginning the race, you could get up. Brother Ivan, I think, is already um, up there in a classroom. If you want to know about your next steps of you gave your life to Christ, now you want to know uh, what it is. What's my next step? How do I draw closer? How do I, how do I get my relationship to get closer to God? Um, those things that I need to know to be saved. Uh, those are the classes that are happening right now. It's super important that you go to those because that is the foundation of what we are talking about here in our Sunday services. How many of you uh, saved some money this week? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Last week, we, the first week, Brother Andrew talked about faith. Remember that faith in Abraham and how God was testing Abraham's faith and how he, through the different, uh, uh, dif through the different uh, stages in his life, how he had to obey God 
even when it didn't make sense. We talked about uh, that in the last week. We talked about a fresh start in our finances, and I gave you a little bit of my testimony, and I gave you a little bit of how we could save our money. And if you didn't, if 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 you weren't here last week and you want to go back and rewind and watch it, they're uh, recording us now on YouTube. Let's give our hand to our media team. For recording us on YouTube. Now I gotta watch what I say. So, <laughs> Amen. And uh, the, go back and, like I said last week, we talked about your money and how God wants to bless you to be a blessing to other people and how you could um, uh, change your your family tree, change your family. Uh, maybe you're broke like a joke right now, but how God will bless you when you are faithful and good stewards of your money. Amen. And today uh, we're going to talk about a fresh start, talking about family values that God desires. How many of us believe that values, our family values are important? Amen. Amen. I believe that family values are important. And with this said, I just want to give a shout out to Sister Elizabeth who, grad, who got, who passed the exam and now she's a family therapist <laughs> for the state of California. Congratulations. So she's, she's going to teach the class, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm no therapist, not even close to one, I just like throw everyone out of the door and say figure it out, no, but she takes the time, if you need help with anything, I'm sure she can give you some tidbits and she's going to say stuff, I'm going to probably say stuff today, she's like, man, that's so wrong, but just hang on with me, just hang on for a little bit, hey, enjoy the ride, we're going to talk about family values that God desires, I think it's important that we talk about these things because... For whatever reason, in our in our culture, in the Hispanic culture, it's it's very difficult to different cultures, uh, the Chinese or the Caucasians or different people, where they they sit down and they talk and they dialogue about your future and they say, hey, how's it going? They sit around the dinner table and us as Mexicans, we're like cutting the lawn and eating a burrito at the same time and talking to the swag, the the comadres and the friends at the same time. No, and I think it's important that we learn these values because they're not. They're not Chinese values, they're not Caucasian values, they're values that God holds dear and are in the Word of God, and I think are important for us to know, and today you might be like, man, he's going to talk about a bunch of family stuff, and I'm not even married, and I don't even have kids, but one day you will. And I hope you learn this lesson so you don't run into the same, uh, the same problems that some of us run into, or the same issues. Because some of you are, are thinking, you know, in the future, Lord willing, I'm going to be married, you know, have a husband, have a wife, you know, four or five kids, I don't know, the horse and chickens in the backyard, what do I know? But I believe that if we, if we talk about these things, uh, these family values, I think it's going to help you out, whether you have kids, uh, like mine are 14, my oldest is 14, my youngest is 10, some of you. Uh, brother uh, Levi has a newborn, super cute newborn that that we have to we we're, we're gonna have to watch. You no, know? we have to we have to make sure that support them yet. You know, make sure that he's doing good. And a lot of us we don't talk about these things, but I think it's important that we talk about them. Are you ready? Yeah. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. We're gonna go to the book of John, chapter fourteen and verse six as our starting verse. I'm gonna ask that we stand. John chapter 14. Everyone got a hand up to I, I made a, uh, a uh, outline for you guys to fill out during our... You guys like those? Yes. All right. So that way you can take them to your home, take them to your dad and say, hey, this is what we talked about today. John chapter 14. And with the help of Samantha, she's going to help us out today. Amen. John chapter 14 and verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, everyone say, I am the way, the truth. And the life. Once again, Jesus said to him, I am what? And? And? And no one comes to the Father except through me. Can we read it one more time? You like this one? Let's say it all together. Ready? Go. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. You may be seated. Father, we come before you. We thank you for this time that we're going to be able to share your word today, God. I ask you that you use me once again to speak your word today. Lord, that you may open up our hearts to understand what you have placed in my, in my life, Lord, that to speak today. I ask you that you open up our ears, Lord, that to hear what you have for our lives, Lord, that we may be obedient and be uh, doers of your word. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen, amen, amen. Family values that God desires. You're going to be following me on the PowerPoint. I'm going to have all the, this time I, I did it right with all the good points on there. So you'll fill out your um, outline as we're going through this. Amen. There has never been a time where family values have been under fire like they are today. We are living in times where they are trying to change the status of marriage from being a man and a woman to being a man and a man or a woman and a woman. We're living in times where we have to do or they tell us to do what feels right in our own hearts. But the Bible tells me that the heart is the most deceitful of them all. It feels like and they tell you, do what it feels right. Do what your heart tells you. If you feel like you can be a girl, then be a girl. If you feel like you can be a guy, well, then be a guy. If you feel like you can do what feels right. And then there's never been a time like never before where family values have been on, on, on the radar of government and on the radar of this world. But I'm here to tell you that there is truth. Uh, and the Bible says that I, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is truth in this. We have to, we've been told that we have to be tolerant and that we can't offend anybody anymore. We've been told that we have to make sure that we use the correct pronouns. Can I be true? Can I be, can I be real today? Amen. Hallelujah. If I offend you today, that's not my point. That's not what I want to do. I just want to share truth with you today. We have been told that we can't offend and we, we have to make sure that we talk to people correctly and you, like I said, use the correct pronouns. And even in the church, we have been taught to be more tolerant with people. Oh, brother, how are you? Oh, you're still living in sin. Well, God bless you. Come on, y'all. God ain't going to bless you if you're still living in sin. We don't talk about, we don't preach about fornication. We don't preach about adultery. We don't preach about homosexuality. We don't preach about there is a heaven, but there also is a hell. You can like that. It's all right. We, we don't talk about those things. And of course, I'm not saying that we hate you if you're living this lifestyle. But at the same time, we love you enough to tell you that you're not living the way and according to the word of God. That there is truth and you find that in Jesus Christ. Someone say amen. 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 What am I trying to say? Because the enemy is using the same tactics that he's always used. To attack the family. What did he do? What was the first sin committed Adam and Eve to disobey? To sin? To go against the family. And I think it's important for us to talk about a fresh start in our family values. What are our family values? Hallelujah. Psychologists say that the values that we instill in our children. From the time that they're born to the, to the time that they're 8 years old. That's where we have the most influence. From when they're born to 8 years old. Any 8 year olds here. Good, they're being influenced in class. There's one right there. Bro, that's that's the age. Come up here so I can show you. We can see how an eight-year-old looks. Come here. <laughs> Good, what's your name? Huh? I can't hear you. I'm deaf. Oh, Luke. Oh, you're, oh yeah, you're Garcia. Oh, yeah, you're Tim. Luke. All right. Eight years old. What I pour into Luke as a parent, all the values, all the all the... All the verses of the Bible, all the morals, I have until this age, they say, to influence him. Because after this age and above, they get influenced. Thank you, Luke. Let's give Luke a hand clap. He's looking sharp today. What I do after eight years old, they get influenced by others. By what they see, by what they hear, by what they're taught at school, by what their friends say. I'm fighting things that I never fought in my house, that my parents never fought with me, that I'm fighting in my house. Because they're being influenced at school. Like, where did you learn that? Where did you hear this? What did you just say? <laughs> right? Because the values, if, if, if we, and I think it's important for us as the church to teach these things. 
And you might ask, my, and you might ask, well, how is it that we influence our children? How is it that we influence our friends? How is it that we can influence those that are around us? Because I don't know about you, but when my dad calls me and says, hey, we need to talk, it's because I'm in trouble. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, man, what does he want to talk about? I start looking at my life. I start looking at my wife. I start looking at my kids. Start looking at, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And you, it's like that, that, that gut wrench, like, man, am I doing something wrong? And I think there's a good way to do this. And we're going to receive uh, throughout the, the word of God, how we can influence our children, how we can influence our, how many want to be a good influence for your children that not only you don't just sit, you don't just call them to the dinner table when something went wrong, but that you can have a continual dialogue with your children. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse six to nine, we're going to talk about how can we influence our children? How can we influence those that are around us? Or even how can we influence ourselves? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 through 9 says, Get them inside of you, and get them inside of your children. Talk about them wherever you are, sitting at home or walking in the street. Talk about them from the time you get in uh, from the time you get up in the morning or when you go to bed at night. Tie them on your hands and your forehead as a reminder. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your homes and of your city gates. Amen? Amen. This, this, this portion of the scripture is right before where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. They would repeat this and repeat this and repeat this and repeat this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So when someone would come up and tell them a different doctrine, they'd be, no, 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 no. I remember my daddy showed me. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You come saying something else, no, 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 no. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But. This is how they did it. Number one, how do we do it? Be, be intentional. Be intentional. How do we? How, do, how are we intentional? I matched it up there. Get them inside of you. First of all, you gotta live right. You gotta make sure you you have values inside of you. You have biblical principles. Get them inside of you. So to you and say it's my responsibility it's my responsibility I have to be intentional get them inside of you and then get them inside of your children you can't give something that you don't have if you don't live biblical morals if you don't have values then how are you going to share those with your children that's why it's so important it tells you here get them inside of you first Get them inside of you. Why? So that way you can, in turn, give them to your children. Number two, how can we also, we, we, how do we also influence? Be informal. Talk about them wherever you are. Sitting at home. Walking in the streets. Talk about them from time to time. Get out when you wake up in the morning and when you go to bed. Be informal. Like I said, you don't always have to, and those are good. You don't always have to. Mijo, ven pa' acá. Son, come here. Boom, here we go. Let me teach you something. They're not going to listen to you. But if you be, if you're informal and you tell them, and you tell them, hey, I've been thinking about this. You talk to them. Be, be, be a friend, be a friend and say, hey, and instill morals wherever you go. I, one thing that, that drives me crazy is when we, we, we use every moment as a teachable moment. Use every, every, everything, that, everything that happens, every, wherever you are, use them as, 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 as teachable moments. I'll be driving down the freeway and we'll see a sign or something. I'm like, you know what that means? They go, no, that means this. But you know what I've seen lately? And it breaks my heart because I've seen my kids do it too. And I'm like, no, 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 this can't be. Is you're driving down the freeway. And there's the mom and the dad driving. And the kids in the back. With their AirPods. Even if they're fake, they're cool. Put them in. Even if you bought them at Burlington for $9.99, they're white and they look like AirPods, I'll use them. 
and they're driving and you can drive for eight hours and not have one conversation with your children. Think about it. How are you ever going to make it informal? How are you ever going to teach them? Use, te use everything as teachable moments. Use, use, use this way in wherever you are, whatever you see. If there's a black, my kids know that. I'll find anything and I'll preach about anything on the freeway. God said, you got to get off the freeway right now, right now. I said, are you ready? Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Like, this guy's going crazy. But what am I trying to do? I'm trying to inspire preachers after me. I'm trying to inspire young people that will rise up and make a difference in the church that aren't afraid to preach and teach what God is, is doing in our lives. And can you say amen to that? Be informed. Wherever you are, walking, talking, waking up. When you wake up, this is a good day, guys. Get the bullhorn out. Levantanse, hijos de Dios. You know, when they're going to bed, let's pray. Let's talk about this. Judy, thank you for... How many are enjoying the messages on Instagram? Every day they're posting things on, on, on the feed for the, the next 21 days. Amen. There's We had like 23, now it's like 10, and I don't know how many yesterday, but I got out there and I looked at it. And I made it intentional. I said, kids, let's talk about these things. Sit down and, and have teachable moments. Let's talk about it. Tell your children about it. Don't wait till something happens to bring it up. No. Talk about it wherever you are. Number three, how else can we do this? Be inspirational. Tie them. Tie them on your hands and your foreheads as a reminder. Inscribe them on your doorposts and on your homes and on your city gates. Be inspirational. You ever remember? Herb, you probably remember this. Michael Jordan poster, just do it, or something like that, right? Where he's like with the ball and dunking like that, the Nike, just do it. That's inspirational. What kind of inspiration are you looking at? What kind of inspiration? It says here, tie them, or tie them on your hands, on your forehead. Sometimes, oh, oh, sometimes people go, oh, yeah, see, we can get tattoos. Just put them on your head and your forehead. Come on, y'all. <laughs> so when you look in the mirror it says Jesus right here no <laughs> inscribe them on your doorposts and on your homes and on your city gates what, what, what can we do with this be inspirational what kind of quotes I love Monza's posts that she puts all the time they're inspiring they're inspiring some of you haven't requested me yet so I can't tell you what kind of stuff you're putting but they're inspiring what, and I, th I thought about this. If I were to go to your room right now, and I was going to put pictures on here, but I'm like, nah, I'll leave it like that. But if I were to go to your room today, Brother Izzy, come on in. What pictures do you got on your wall? <laughs> the top model of the year? The... Marijuana plant bush. <laughs> Smoking zone. Get high. Do this. My son's into low riders and cars. Who got him into that? I'm trying to rebuke that out of him because I don't like that at all. That's when that's ghetto, bro. <laughs> Sorry if you like cars like that. That's, uh, that's your... I, I'm like, that's just not my thing. I'm like, that can't be your thing either, man. Come on. But what are you what are you being inspired by? Every time you walk into your room, you're inspired by pornography. You're inspired by this. You're inspired by getting high. And you're inspired by this. Why, why, what's on your doorstep? What's in your house walls? What's around you? What's in your mirror? What's in your car when you're driving? What are you looking at? It says here, put them in your hands. Put them in your forehead. Put them where you can see them around you. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not walk. You can do all things through Christ. Prayer is he that is in all these inspirational quotes. In my office, I have a thing that says you can do all things through Christ. Because there's days where I'm like, man, I don't know if I can do this. I look at it and it inspires me. 
But some of us are being inspired by other things, by other, by other people. But we should be inspired and we should learn how to inspire others. Are we good? Amen. Hallelujah. Next. So then, this is how we do it. How can we, I'm going to give you, in the, in the next segment, I'm going to give you values that you should hold with your family. Values that you could be able to teach your family. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to start with this because don't just, don't just, mijo, vamos a hablar de esto. We're going to talk about this thing and sit down, shut up, and don't say anything. I'm going to preach. No, 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 no. Be intentional, be informal, and be inspirational. As a youth leader, you can do the same thing with your people. Be intentional. Don't just call them when you have a meeting. Don't just call them when you need chips at your next, at your next event. <laughs> no, be intentional. Be informal. We're, we're, we're planning if y'all want to join us. We're, we're talking about... Top golf just opened, and I'm just gonna do just some top golf event. We can go and just hit balls and have it. informal, just over there with nachos and after Daniel's fast, of course, nachos and, and and they got all kinds of stuff there and drink. Just have a good time. Be informal. You can influence people at the park. You don't have to be at church. You don't have to wear a suit. You don't have to wear a tie. No, no, no. You can inspire somebody today by your attitude, by your actions, by how you talk, and by what you do. Hallelujah. Amen. So what values can we instill in our families? Number one, the world values riches, but God values generosity. The next slide. The world values riches, but God values generosity. Luke chapter 12 verse 15 says, then he said to them, watch out. Everyone say, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Remember we talked about that last week? This thing? The elbow? <laughs> if you missed it, watch it. It was pretty funny last week. Someone said elbow. Oh. Amen. And we're talking about greed. It says, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life doesn't consist in the abundance of possession. We talked, we talked about this a little. We talked about this last week in extents. That God blesses us to be a blessing. Amen. God blesses. God gives us to be a blessing. God doesn't see all the riches that we have. But he sees how much are we able to give. How much are we able to share of what we have. How easy. If you, if you have this value down in your family. How easy is it for your family to give. Hey. Go give 10 bucks to that guy. Oh, I can buy iPods with this. I can, I can buy a raspado from the raspado lady out there yelling at me. I can, you know what I can, how easy is it for you to give? There's a story of a, of, a, of a grandfather who shares that for Christmas one year. He told his grandkids, here's a hundred bucks. I want you to spend, this is my gift. Your gift to me is I'm going to give you a hundred bucks. And you go and find a need somewhere. And give that to somebody. Share that. Give it to somebody. A homeless. A, a family that is in need. Somebody. And he gave them those hundred dollars. And they went. And for Christmas he said write me a letter of what did you do with those a hundred dollars. And during Christmas we're going to see what, what, what you guys did. He said there was no, there was no presents under the tree that year. He says there was letters. And he opened them up and he was saying how his granddaughters gave to a mom, a single mom that needed a place to stay. And they were able to buy a, a hotel room for a day or for two days. How they were able to feed the homeless. How they were able to give clothes and blankets to the, to the homeless. <laughs> and he said, how did you, how did, and it said how they felt and all that stuff and how, how they were blessed to be able to be a blessing. And then he asked them, he questioned them and this is where the test was. He said, next year for Christmas. Do you want me to buy you a gift or do you want me to do the same thing? He said, no, we want to do the same thing again. Why? Because generosity is contagious. When you see the lives of people that you can change for because of the blessings that God gives you. That's when you know you have, you're, you're living a, 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 a life of generosity. Of being able to give what God has given to us. Amen? 
Number two, the world values achievements. God values relationships. Number two, amen. The world values achievements, but God values relationships. First Thessalonians 3.12 says, And may the Lord make your increase and abound in love one for another and to all just as we do to you. And may the Lord make his increase and abound in love to the one, those around you and just like I do to you. God, the world values achievements. God values relationships. Everyone say relationships. It doesn't matter if you're rich, ugly, cute, good looking. If you win a, if you win the scoring touchdown, the winning touchdown, if you if you're won the spot, if you got that job, if you got that promotion, if you're the CEO of the company, everybody looks at your achievements and they say, Yeah, you're doing good. You made it. That's what the world values is achievements, but God wants relationships. What am I saying with this? That we are living in a world where we put achievements over relationships. Many of us are driven by our achievements, which is not a bad thing, but, but there must be a balance in reaching our achievements and our relationships. What am I saying? As sons, as fathers, as husbands, as leaders, as an employee, there has to be a balance in our lives. We want to achieve the, we want to get the latest model of car. We want to get the greatest this. We want to do this. As leaders, as an employee, there has to be a balance in our lives. We want to achieve the, we want to get the latest model of car. We want to get the greatest this. We want to do this. to be a balance in our lives we want to achieve the we want to get the latest model of car we want to get the greatest this we want to be a balance here you have to learn as a, as as family you have to learn how to balance these things family matters more than status this has to be a family matters you have to learn as a, as that status you have to wife put pictures of your husband on these things Family matters more. I would rather be poor in status, but rich in my relationship with my kids. That status. Because some of us are living where your dad, you don't see him. Because he's working and working and working and working. And you say, where's dad? He's working. What's your dad's last name? Working. He doesn't know how to balance that. And you gotta tell him, Dad, I need your attention. Mom, I need your attention. Mom, you need to be here for me. We say, oh, there's open house at the school. Eh, forget that, I gotta work. Hey, there's a play going on at school. Eh, we don't got time for that. Hey, let's go to McDonald's and have an act. Ah, we don't have time. Come on, y'all. Relationships versus achievements. We want to be the greatest. We want to be the best. So everyone can look at us and say, yeah, he got it. He's doing this. He's doing I'll tell you this story. I just, it just came to my mind. There was a funeral. And there was a husband who had passed away. And the family was sitting there in the front. And friends would come up and they say, oh, man, this man is the greatest person in the world. He loved his family. He loved God. And he loved to do this. And he was such a great man, such an influencer. He changed the world. And he, I mean, he did all kinds of stuff. And the, the, the son tells his mom, he goes, Mom, go see if that's dad in there. Why? Because to everyone else, he was this great superhero. But at home, he was never there. Family matters more than your status. Say amen to that. Amen. Are you understanding me? Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's more important family has a it's, it's because what is more important is not that your family has a 4,000 square foot home but yet you can't love each other what is more important that you have the latest kitchen appliance but you can't sit and have dinner together is it more important to have the biggest I think there's like an 86 inch TV now at Costco but yet you can't talk to each other 
status, relationships, achievements, more. God values your relationships. Watch that your desires for success don't destroy your family. And for me, it's a struggle. This is a struggle. My wife has to pull me all the time. Because if it was for me, I'd be here every day, Priscilla. You'd have to see me every single day. Because this is what this is my heartbeat, the church, you guys, what we do here. But my wife says, hey, there's a kid behind you. And I gotta be reminded of that. Alex talked about this. His, 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 his status just changed with his with his newborn. Things change, but those things and those things are important. Some of you are, some of you uh, despise your dad or despise your mom because they were always at church or they were always at work and they never had time for you. But thank God that you're here today and you're not going to make the same mistakes that they made. Someone say amen to that. Hallelujah, this is good. You see, as and what, and your relationships change as. Your kids get older. When they're in elementary school, you're more of a caretaker. Right now, you're a caretaker, Mosey. You're a caretaker. You're a caretaker. Everyone else needs to start having some kids. Come on. You are, I'll get to your point where you're at. You're a caretaker. You're there to provide and to protect. Your relationship with your children is to provide and to protect. As they get older, high school age, my God. Woo! Them attitudes need to go. High school, it's like they just jump into high school. It's like, man, y'all. You either talk too much or you don't say anything at all. When you say something, it's a bad attitude. It's like, come on. But in high school... You're no longer that caretaker. That I, it's like it's like it's it's so sad when you see a, a, a high schooler. It's like I bet. Come on, me. Well, let's go to school. Come on. No, 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 no. Your role changes. Your relationship changes, and you're more of a coach in high school. You're saying, "Hey, come on, get up. You can do it. Come on, I believe in you. Get up. You can do it. Those grades need to come up. You see, you're you're more of a coach. Come on, read your Bible." Come on, you got to get to church. Yeah, this Daniel's fast. I know it's hard, but come on, give me two days at least, you know? <laughs> three days. Come on, I know you can do it three days. And there you are. No, I can't do it. Yes, you can. You're a coach. Young adults, some married, some not married, some in college and career. As a parent, you're there as a counselor. You're there to guide them, to lead them. To say, hey, I see this in your life. And I see this that maybe you could change. Make this difference in your life. You're, you're more of a counselor. And then as adults, when they get married and they leave the house as parents, you should feel, feel proud and say, hey, I like what they're doing. I, my dad told me the other day, he says, son, he goes, I'm proud of you. How do you think that makes me feel good? But I told him everything because of what you taught me. <laughs> My work ethic, who I am, how I do things, reflects a lot on my parents. And hopefully one day, my children can say the same thing. Because right now they're devils, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> but as they're growing up, that I can inspire them, that I can motivate them, that, I can, that one day I can turn around as they're growing up and have wives and ten children eat. <laughs> I want a big Christmas gift. Come on. And I can say, man, hey, there's my son. Look at his wife and look at his kids. Man, I'm proud of you. I know you. What's your kid's name? And Eliel. Hey, when Eliel is like this tall, you know, that when he's growing up, he sees his daddy preaching. He sees his dad touching lives and says, man, that's cool. I want to be like that. I want to be like my mom. Hill song and all with the hat, singing up here. I want to dress like my mom. I want to be like that. Inspire them. These are relationship things, guys. Nice. No, come on. 
All right, let's go, let's go. The world values power. God values service. The world values power. God values service. Matthew 23, 11 through 12 says, The greatest among you will be your servant. Everyone say servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The world that we live in is, like I told you guys, a world of status or of titles. I'm the president, I'm the governor, the professor, the chairman, the CEO, the doctor, the pastor. But God doesn't look at that. He doesn't see that. He sees our servants. Not, 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 not what our title is, what the plaque on the wall says. No, our values, we got to teach, we got to teach our kids, we got to teach ourselves that God values service. God, but uh, many, many want the position, but don't want the responsibility. Many want the, the, the plaque on the wall, but they don't want the responsibility. But God wants us to serve God wants us to be people of service. There's three things we can, there's three things that we can do in life. One, we can serve God, we can serve others, or we can serve ourselves. These aren't on your notes, write these down. We can serve God, serve others, or serve yourself. Serve God, serve others, or serve yourself. You got that? Now listen to this. You can serve, you can serve others and yet not serve God. But you can't serve God without serving others. And you can't serve God and others while serving yourself. Does that make sense? I'll say it one more time. You can't serve you can serve others and not serve God. You can have a homeless shelter and serve and serve and serve and yet not serve God. Okay? So you can serve, but yet not serve God. You cannot serve God without serving others. And you, you can serve God and others, or you can't serve God and others trying to serve yourself. You can't do that. Me, me, me. It's all about me, me. No, it's all about Him. Amen. Always about Him. We're, we're, we, we, we are never... Too good or too important to stop and serve others. I've seen way too many people, nice people, loving people, good people. I mean, they, they'll do anything. The minute they get a title, do that. Go there. I don't talk to you. It's not about that. It doesn't matter if I'm the president of the United States. I'm going there. I'm trying. Hope for me. <laughs> but if I'm there, I should be able to see everybody. Opportunities to serve. Oh, you know, I can't talk to you. You're too new here. You go to Pomona High School. Oh no, what high school do you go to? Shaping High. I don't talk to you. I do. I'm from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from the Southern High School. To serve. To serve. Learn, guys, learn to serve one another. Doesn't matter if they're black or white, Jesus loves all of them. <laughs> Jesus loves all of them. Learn to serve that when you, that me as a preacher, I remember Sam Van Berden told me one time, in a, or he mentioned in a preaching, he said, I, I never want to be to the position where he was flying in the hotels and all in and out, in and out, preaching in, in large congregations, stuff like that. But his father reminded him and said, never forget what a drunk smells like. Because we can be all up here hot headed and preaching and preaching and preaching, but yet we can never serve. That God always gives us a spirit of service. Amen. That wherever we are, whatever we do, that hey, we can reach out and extend a hand. Yeah, maybe they don't look like us. Maybe they don't talk like us. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Maybe we don't even know where they live. But hey, you need a ride. I'll take you. That's why God gave you that eight passenger car so you can take more people. You come to church by yourself sometimes and your car is empty. Fill it up. Fill it up. Tell people around you, hey, I, I, 
you know, let's go out for lunch today, man. Pay for that person at Starbucks, even though you don't know them. Don't you love that? It's like, they paid for you. Thank you, Jesus. Be of service. Be of service. The greatest among you will be your servant. Sometimes we want to be great, but we don't know how to serve. You ain't never going to be great. Because that person that exalts himself shall be humbled, and the humble shall be exalted. Someone say amen. amen. I'm going quick now. Number four. The world values appearance. Oh, I'm going to get ugly right now. The world values appearance, but God values character. The world values appearance. I still got three sheets, guys. We're going long today. I'm just playing. The world values appearance. God values character. The world tells us today that beauty is skin deep. We have, listen to this. We have physical enhancement surgeries to look attractive and wear clothes to highlight them. Mm. Why? Because society is telling us today that sexy is beautiful. Sexy is a great thing right now. If you have it, flaunt it. If you have it, show it. That's what the world tells you. And the guys, that's for the women. If, you, if I have it, I'm flaunting it. I'm showing it. What values are you holding? And for the guys, it's like, if they're flaunting it, then I'll consume it. Think about it. What values are you teaching? What, val what posters do you have on your wall? What values are you teaching? What values are you looking at, hearing? What things are you seeing? God, the world values appearance, but God values character. What is the Bible telling us? The, or sorry, the Bible tells us that a woman should dress modestly. You know what that means? Modestly. We'll give you guys a class later. And for the men, it tells us, bro, have some self-control and be well-behaved. That's what it tells us. Self-control and be well-behaved. I believe that modesty is a value that we are missing in our culture and in our churches today. Some of, some of us come to church like we're going to the dance. <laughs> People see you as like, man, are they going to church or are they going to the club? You can't tell them, I'm going to preach this, I'm going to preach it. You don't like it, it is what it is. <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm responsible for it. Right. it it's... it's it's what are we, what are, what are the values? What values are we teaching our kids? I see some girls that, well, we go to knots all the time. You, you see, I already told you that. We go to knots all the time. And sometimes I'm seeing girls walking through, I'm like, how did they leave their house like that? <laughs> Where is their mom? Or maybe they don't, that's why they're, I don't know. Or maybe I'm prejudging. I'm like, man. Where is the mom? Where is the dad saying, hey, you are not leaving my house that way, girl. You get back in there. Because <laughs> before you did that, it was like chanclaso, boom. <laughs> right? I don't have girls, so I don't have that, I don't have that issue, thank God. <laughs> Shorts, flip-flops, let's go, a hat, no? No, he's like, what are you wearing? No, that's weird, no? But for girls, it's like... What, what, what are you, how are you doing this modesty? We don't teach moms, moms that have daughters, young, young people, that your value, that you know what the Bible says about how you dress in modesty, how to walk, how to talk, how to be, how to be a lady, how to sit right, how to, how to, how to talk to guys, how to talk to girls, how to, how to be a woman of God. That should be a value of high priority. Arturo, when you have a daughter that you tell her, hey girl, you better watch it. You better, I'm telling you, bro, you better tell her. If not, I will. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at what 1 Samuel 16, 7 says. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance for at, for at his physical, or at his physical stature because I refused him. Talking about when they were looking up for a king. For the Lord does not see, for the Lord does not see as man sees, for the man sees at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at what? The heart. 
It's time that we care more about the condition of our heart than we do of our outward appearance. That care that 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 in us in us we have this character. This character of of who God wants us to be. You see, many of us lack character. We are who, who they say we are. I am who who people think I am. But when they ask you, hey, are you a Christian? No, I'm not a Christian. And then at church, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian. Character. Be who you are. That you, us as parents, as, as fathers, as mothers, can instill character in our children. Can tell them what's right, what's wrong. What the Bible teaches. What the Bible explains to us. Be people of character. It's not so much our appearance, but really what's inside of us is going to reflect what's outside of us. Look at what the verse says here, and I, 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 did a, I did a stop here because it says, Do not look at his appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not look at, at man, uh, for the Lord does not see as man sees. For the man sees the outward appearance. Someone is looking at your outward appearance. Humans. Us. What you're wearing, what you're dressing, what you're calling. But God sees our hearts. But I believe that what's in our hearts is expressed on, on the outward. Amen? Amen? Character, guys. Number five, the last one. The world values leisure. God values worship. The world values leisure. And God values worship. We worship our work, we work at our play, and we play at our worship. What am, I, what am I talking about? Is we worship our work, our work, like I told you before, becomes our first priority. Work becomes our first priority. And then we, we, we work at our play, or our leisure, our time off, or time away, becomes our second priority. And then we play at our worship, oh, when I get a chance, I'll go to church. Ah, uh, if I feel good, then I'm going to... We give God our leftovers. We do everything we can to work and make it and make it so we can buy that car so we can go on vacation. That's good and stuff. I'm not telling you that. But when that becomes your priority over God, then that's where it comes, becomes an issue. The world values leisure. Leisure, God values your worship. You work all week and you're tired and you come here like, Oh man, I just want to sit down. And you can't lift up your hands and give God your best for 30 minutes to worship, to praise Him. Look at what the Bible says in Jer uh, Jeremiah 29, 13. You will see me and find me when you seek me with what? With what? You will see me, find me when you seek me. With all, Lord, tell your neighbor all, oh. all your heart. In Espanol, todo tu corazón. That sounds good. <laughs> all your heart. You will find me. You will see me. When you do it with all your heart. 21 day fast. Nah. <laughs> Come in early to pray. Nah. Bible study. Forget it. Come on, guys. When you start to seek God with all your heart, with all your heart, God values your worship. What worship is just not the, the during the music set. No, no, no. It goes beyond that. Worship is your lifestyle of who you are, what you do, how you accomplish those things. God values worship more than the, 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 the yacht on your boat, on the yacht out on... A uh, Newport dog. I know. Y'all got me. No? We care more about the leisure. We're more excited about going to Cancun next month. Right? Y'all talk, oh, I'm going on vacation. I'm not going to be here for this. I'm going on vacation. I'm not going to be here for that. Oh, well, that's going to have to wait because I'm going to go to this. I'm going to go to that. Uh, when are you going to go to church? When are you going to serve like you're supposed to serve? When are you going to do the things that God is asking you to do? He values more your worship, your service. 
Am I saying going to Cancun is wrong? No. You have a ticket, take me with you. <laughs> I want to go too. But when I put more priority on leisure, then I do worship. Levi, if your kid starts asking you, Papi, are we going to church? You're already doing wrong. My kids, they don't ask me, are we going to church on Sunday? They say, what time, what service are we going to? <laughs> I said, I got a meeting today. We got to wake up early. Let's go. Because guess what? After here, then I'm going to Knott's Berry Farm. So if you all want to go, let's go. Take all of you. But God values your worship. Worship. Do you guys understand what that means? Do you, you know, you get my point on that. Listen to this. You can have the best gourmet meal at the best restaurant here in Pomona once a week. Or what, where's that good restaurant around here? Y'all laughing like, there ain't nothing good at Pomona. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I was, getting, I was just getting inspired. Let me, tell you, let me tell you this story. Let me tell you this story. I was just getting inspired this week because I went to go visit a cell group like off the tent and there was a, a, a up on the hill a cocoa palm or something like that. And I told my kids, I said, man, I'm going to take your wife. I'm not your wife. I'm going to take, take my mom, your mom. <laughs> my wife, your mom. I go, that looks nice. I'm going to take her up there. Right? Not any, what am I saying? What am I trying to Oh. You can, t you can go to Coco Palm once a week. Good, I don't know if it's good, but you can go to a good restaurant once a week and still starve to death. <laughs> you can come to church once a week with the best steak there is. The best preacher in the world. You're looking at him. And yet starve to death spiritually. <laughs> Why? Because you just go that one time. You just come to church that Sunday and see what they're going to give me. And then you go and you start. You go and you start. That's why I so I promote the small groups. I promote small groups. Why? Because during the middle of your week, the middle of your week, you can go and talk about these things. Have relationship. Have dialogue with you. Raise your hand if you're in a small group. The rest of you, what's going on? I'm going to start signing you up automatically, I think. And put you with somebody. I've been visiting some, some groups this last couple, this last month. And man, I leave out of there motivated. I went to a group, Sister uh, Lizette, she's not here today. I went to a group. She goes, I, she called me. She goes, brother, I just got a bunch of kids. I said, I'll go anyways. I got a bunch of kids too. <laughs> I showed up and I think the oldest was 15 and they were all young from there. And guess what? I sat there and I taught them a little Bible study. But you know what? I left there and I said, you know what? If I could give them anything, something small, they'll remember it. I saw the little girls on Friday. She goes, I know you. <laughs> that makes me feel good. Because somebody, you got to inspire these people. Let's stand. Before I don't finish. These things take them with you. Maybe today, God wants to give you a fresh start in your family. Maybe you're a dad, you're a mom, and you got your priorities mixed up. God wants you to align them. Maybe you thought by giving your kids, this is something important too, maybe you thought by giving your kids everything that they wanted would make them happy. But in reality, what makes them happy is by you being there. Amen? Maybe those things you need to align and change. Maybe, 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 maybe this is how you witness to, to your family, to your mom that's not here. How many have relatives that, don't, that are not here at church? Relatives that need to know about God. Maybe what you need to do is grow in a relationship with them. Be there. Be that husband. Be that uncle. Be that cousin. Be that granddaughter. Be that niece. That relationship. 
Oh, no, yo ya no hablo con mi tía Luce, Luza porque, oh, es el diablo. Maybe you need to go with tía Lucy and sit down. And you don't have to say anything. Just be that person, that loving person. And just say, hey, what is it that you got? There's something different about you. Something different about you. And that's how you can reach them. Amen? Amen. Maybe your family today needs to align their values to what God values for your family. The last verse I have today, Revelation 3:15, 7 through 19. I've read it before, we've heard it before, but I like how it said it in the message version. Listen to what it says. It says, I know you inside and out, and find little to my liking. Imagine that. <laughs> I know everything about you and I like nothing about you. You are not cold. You're not hot. Far better to either be hot or cold. You're stale. Who likes stale chips? <laughs> right? Nasty. I had stale chips for Daniel's fast the other day. My wife made me. They're all right, but they were kind of stale, huh? They're... I thought I'd just bring them. Right now that I'm up here, you know, she's down there. You make, it says, you make me want to fuck. You brag, I'm rich, I've got it made, I need nothing from anyone. Obviously that in fact, you're a pitiful blind beggar, therefore, uh, thread, threadbare and homeless. The people I love, I call to account, proud and correct, and guys so that they will live at their best. I like the last part. I like the last part. It says, hey, you're wrong. You're not as good as you think you are. You're not all that in a bag of chips or Gatorade in the desert. Sorry. That's not you. But I tell you this to correct me. I tell you this to show you the way. Why? Because the people I love, I call to account. Proud are, are prod and correct and guide so that they can live at their best. Isn't that the heart of a parent? The reason why I correct, the reason why I discipline, not because I don't love them, no, because I love them, I correct. And God is the same way, he says, because I love you. Because if he didn't love you, he'd let you do whatever you want and get lost. But he says, I bring you to a place like this because I love you. I've called you because I love you. If you're here for the first time, I love you. Listen, I want to correct what's wrong in your life. You're hot, you're cold, you're all this, you're all that. Yes, but I'm here to give you an opportunity to correct that. To give you a chance because I love you. Because I love you. Isn't anyone grateful for that? That God just didn't give up on us and say, hey, you're no good for nothing. I can't do nothing with you. You messed up. You did this. You did wrong. No, 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 no. And God brings you back to correct him to say, hey, I love you. I love you. <laughs> there where you are, close your eyes. Father, we come before you. Lord, this message of these values that you 